Up and down Fred Island, home of the Air Task Group, activity begins to speed up. 14 hours is not a long time, especially after you've been at work on a project for months. The ships of the line are now steaming out, taking their position on the seas surrounding Zero Point. Construction personnel are being evacuated. The nerve centers begin functioning at full speed. On Fred Island this day, there are more planes than on any stateside base ten times the size of Fred. Half of the entire island is taken up by runway and parking areas for aircraft. H minus 14 hours. Men of the United States Air Force are preparing, planning, studying, learning, waiting. The story that follows is simply the story of these men. The aircraft are being groomed like thoroughbred horses before the big stake race. There's no such thing as too much maintenance. An aircraft mechanic can be wrong only once, especially on a mission like this. H minus 13. The last military air transport plane winds up its engines and moves out. There goes Fred Island's last scheduled contact with the outside world. Now at H minus 13 hours, a single runway on the island is reserved for test aircraft. And test aircraft only. On the inside, if they let you in, it's a different story. These are special aircraft. Every one of them rigged with special meters and dials and gauges to record pressure and heat. This bomb bay no longer houses bombs, but instead carries canisters. The nose of this fighter carries no machine gun. Instead, it holds an electronic recorder. This wingtip fuel tank is cunningly designed to house a paper filter. The crews of these planes are like busmen on a holiday. Though 12 hours still separate them from their mission, they can't resist coming down to the line to inspect their ships. On a mission like this, men and machines become automatically one. Without the man, the machine is nothing. Without the machine, the man is not an airman. Our precious cargo is housed secretly inside our intercontinental jet bomber. H minus 11 hours. Scientific personnel are making a final check of the target area. In a helicopter, it's easier to see the big picture, to get a perspective impossible to get on the ground. A copter can hover like a hummingbird over the target and surrounding areas to see that all the pieces fit. One of the pieces that must fit with a jigsaw precision is Pacific weather. B-50 weather aircraft are continually taking off from Fred right through H-10, H-9. Keep the record straight over the miles of ocean that surround the target. Far out from the proving grounds, the men in the special weather planes keep a never-ending watch on the changeable tropical weather. Humidity, pressure, winds aloft. Vital information to be radioed back to the task force on Fred Island. Some of the other atolls in the Marshall Islands, Air Force personnel check the weather from ground positions. Right up to the final minutes, the flow of weather information never ceases. Now darkness falls on Fred Island. H minus eight. H minus seven. six hours, minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one.
minus 15 minutes. Target point, a speck of coral 45,000 feet below. You look down and you feel very much alone, but you know you're not. The scientists on the ground are so closely in touch with our every movement that they could be in the cockpit. The men of the scientific task group work inside a well-protected bunker not far from zero point on an island called Bikini. They are underground and we are 45,000 feet in the air. And yet we couldn't be closer together. The panels in this room keep check on every instrument pinpointed around the target. If one single item of the immense operation doesn't check out, this man can stop the whole mission by radioing negative, negative. The steady tone in the bunker comes directly from the bomb. The beep indicates that everything in the weapon is as it should be. At the moment of drop, the beep will stop. Silence in the bunker will mean that the bomb is falling. The plane bears a wet underbelly for good reason. The same reason why we sit in a pressurized glass bowl, surrounded by thermal curtains and wearing opaque goggles. All this is to ward off caloric effects once we drop the bomb. H minus one minute. Fours now start making pass after pass through the radioactive cloud to collect particles of nuclear radiation and gaseous matter. B-57s engage in another kind of sampling. They deliberately pile through the active cloud at different elevations to test radiation at different heights.
nation. Quickly they return and quickly a new set of men start their work. up to check radiation levels. Air crews and technicians look for evidence of the bomb's power. Some aircraft show no damage whatsoever. Some show light traces of burn on the fuselage and control surfaces. And a few bring back mute evidence of the fact that the bomb can bite and crunch miles in the air. This is why we concealed the white filters in the planes, to catch and trap nuclear particles. Technicians in special clothing remove the samples. Radioactive particles of atomic fission must be handled not with kid gloves, but with metal prongs. All aircraft must be immediately decontaminated. is over. The evidence is gathered from the air, from the ground, from the sea. It is loaded for fast delivery back to the laboratories in the United States. Now the test is complete. Now Fred Island is once more in a wee talk. The bomb has been dropped. All the months of preparation, the infinite patience, the courage, all of it had paid off. seconds. But wet or dry, Fred Adam looked awfully good to us. 